Hey everyone, Hero here and welcome back for another Destiny 2 build. For today's series, we'll be looking at a new and improved version of the Controverse Hold build that many of us are so familiar with. Compared to before, Void 3.0 has changed up the landscape as to how some Void builds function and luckily Controverse Hold hasn't been infected that badly. However, the new abilities we have received has made using Controverse an absolute staple if you ever main Warlocks. The build we have for show is simple. Grenades will yield you big damage and energy in return, but with elemental wells added in, and some of the new aspects as well, you will get constant healing, 50% damage reduction, 25% void weapon damage increasement, constant void explosion, and a hell of a void headache by the end of this. If you like my last controversial whole build that I did, then you have no problems with this one as I used this to carry me in legendary campaign, and it worked out a treat. However, if you want more good stuff like this in the future, then if you can go ahead and leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications, then I would really appreciate it. So for subclass, the main part you want to focus on is the aspects, as they will provide certain effects for the build. Chaos Accelerant will allow you to charge your grenades and in our case, it will increase the duration and size of a grenade in general. We then have Feed the Void, where Void Ability Final Blows will give us health back and extend our devourability for longer. Next, for your fragments, they should be as followed. Echo Remnants allows our grenades to stay out for longer. Echo Explosions allow Void Ability Thunder Blows to cause targets to explode. And then lastly, we have the Echo of Undermining, where a Void Grenade cause a weakened effect on combatants. This, fully combined, allow grenades to be nuked when unleashed on groups of combatants, or even a boss, to mini boss. As you'll see, our grenades will be dishing out tons of damage upon anyone caught within it, and the amount of damage done should be enough for you to get your full grenades back, or even close to it. In fact, you'll be guaranteed a grenade back for each successful hit if you follow the same method and load up as I have, as I plan to make sure you always are able to attack again and again. Our discipline for example is at 90, which is a great spot to aim for if you want to make sure you get your grenades back all the time. Do be aware though that using the Echo of Undermining Fragment will provide a negative to your stats, so you will need to invest in anything that's affected by it. From here, we can then rely on the wells to do the rest of the job. The Elemental Ordnance will allow us to produce wells on the fly, and Bountiful Well will allow us to produce two wells instead of one. Once active, we then have the Front of Might mod that will give us a 25% Void Weapon buff for a short duration, although short is an understatement for the following build. We then have Well of Tenacity for that 50% damage reduction, and Volatile Rounds, which in short allows our weapons to turn combatants volatile, aka very explosive. This setup with our design can definitely, and will, make you smile with how chaotic it can be. It's so simple that you can easily change up the mods for a more explosive oriented mindset to accompany the volatile rounds, so you can overall have a very explosive build, or you can focus on having a version that looks like deeper from combatants for more damage over time. Truthfully, the build is very flexible in the design, and purposely designed this way so that players don't need to adapt to all changes made in different modes you play in. But to make the build even more effective, you'll need some weapons that suitably fits around the build from start to finish. Primarize after Ragnar D with Perpetual Motion and Demolitionist, as I honestly believe this is one of the best kinetic shotguns to date for PvE use and the perks just complement it well. It feels great to use, it hits hard, and can be customised to your liking if you manage to complete the patterns needed to do so. Ideally, the weapon will be used for getting more grenade energy back each time you land a hit, and I would also recommend that you add in a major mod so that you can be a little bit more effective against those groups. But overall, I'm pretty short, I highly recommend you nab this role specifically as it will help you out in end game. For secondary, we have the Funnel Web SMG with Substitutes and Engine and Junkie, and this is such a perfect role for the build in mind that I'm pretty sure that I haven't heard much people talk about this role specifically. This role right here will do two things it will reload your weapon for each killed mate and then will give you a massive weapon buff the moment you get killed with said weapon, or get a grenade kill. As we are 100% using grenades, this weapon will be buffed indefinite and reloaded for as long as we are able to do so. However, this isn't the end though, as we do have the front of might mod attached and volatile rounds, so if you think this weapon won't be wrecking things, then you'll be wrong. Honestly, to save you with the review, it's basically Recluse 2.0 and is a must-have for collectors. For Heavy, we have the Two-Tailed Fox Azotic Rocket Launcher, which I found to be very effective at stopping and inflicting high amounts of damage over time. The weapon has built-in suppression of fire damage over time, which is perfect against a mini-boss or boss in general. 
And from use, its effects are pretty straightforward. And since we can apply debuff to the combatant, we can make it even more stronger than currently provided. Although we can swap it out for Galahorn instead if you want even more damage over time, but this will just depend on the type of content you play. And for the stats, key area to focus on straight away is your discipline stat, as this alongside your other mods will help with drastically reducing the time it takes for you to get your grenades back in time. Rule of thumb for any build you do is that if you're focusing on one key aspect of the build, to always make sure that you get that one stat to as high as possible. Now I have mine at 90, which is a good enough level that anyone can achieve, but at the same time this could have gone to 100 if it wasn't affected by the Echo of Undermining negative stat effect. Nonetheless, if you can reach the range of 80 to 100, then you should be fine in terms of cooldown. Since we also have wells being used, they will also give a good chunk of energy back, which means that you can build up grenade energy relatively fast, even when it's not charged. Additionally, Absolution will provide you with ability cooldown from collecting orbs of power, and so will distribution when using your class ability. And lastly, you also want to make sure you have the Bomber mod on as well, since it's a relatively cheap mod to use, and the Harmonic Siphon as that mod will allow Void Weapons to proc and orbs of power. That should be everything that you need in terms of making the grenade cooldown relatively fine for you and at your level. The rest of the stats are as you please. You can invest further into your intellect stat and push it to around 50 to 60, and then add on the Ashes as its mod so you can get even more super energy back per grenade kill you get. I would also recommend that you spec into recovery as well, since your class ability will play a major role in your survival and the lack of resilience provided. Pretty simple in terms of what stats are needed since all of it has been focused into one area. So once that has been achieved, you're pretty much completed the entirety of the build. For those that want this simplified, here are the mods that are currently being used. For Head, we have Resilience, Harmonic Siphon, Ashes to Acid and Bounce for Well mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastball and Fault of Might mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Cocos of Damner, a Thermal Shot Plating and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Absolution, Rocket Launcher Scavenger and Well Tenacity mod. Bond, we have Mind Resilience, Bomber, Distribution, and volatile flow mod. So I've been having a lot of fun with this build like I always do, with how simple and yet powerful it is. We have seen many versions of the build over and over again, some with large focuses on damage while others focusing on blanketing areas with void nades. However, if you look at this build, this build is capable of pulling off such a feat and I highly recommend you have a version on standby for the near future. So what makes this build so different to anything else we have done, or commonly shown? Well, for starters, it really emphasizes on the worlds being used to improve how long you can last in the field. Worlds are pretty strong, so having a 25% weapon buff via Fond of Might and 50% damage reduction via World Tenacity is the new norm, and these setups can make or break a number of builds depending on the scenario you're used in. Luckily for our build, we can use the mod effectively as long as we get minor combatants to use the mod. From here, we can improve on how much damage our grenades do, not from charging, but simply debuffing them. With Echo of Underminer mod, this will provide a 15% debuff to all targets affected, which overall buffs the overall damage of our other grenades over time. As we build up grenade energy, this can be applied to multiple combatants at once, allowing wide coverage and support if need be. Lastly, the build allows our secondary weapon to really shine in the face of danger. Not only will we be able to prop damage buffs for itself, but we can maximize it by combining it with our grenades for the best of both worlds, and Phantom Might can be used extensively to keep the weapon rolling. We should also not forget that applying Phantom Might with Substance makes it an untap damage boost when active, as it will allow us to move through minor to major combatants without needing to reload just on yet. Then add on Devour to the mix and you become a monster for endgame solo content or even teams. Although I've not yet tried this out in Grand Masters, the build does show promise for the user if you have an acquired taste for the finer things in Destiny. I was able to get this out in teams to solo legendary campaign and did its fair share of working with shutting down Scorn, Hive and Luke and Hive alike. As long as I can land my grenades, the amount of damage I can do will become unstoppable. Only downside to such a build is the use of the world's tenacity in certain endgame content and Wells interaction in general. Although this can be easily fixed by applying protective light, with a nerf to such a mod, many players may struggle with deciding to stick with what they got or adapt to the nerfs. However, if you're used to not relying on wells or charger like mods, then this is a non-issue, but down the line it may become one, so it's something that you should keep an eye out. 
Overall, a very broken but fun build to use if you ever want to streamline content without the hassle. Be sure to see my other controversial hold builds I've done so you can expand on the build more and generally have fun. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.